Thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I aim to help you prepare for the private pilot checkride for free in under five minutes a day. Today we continue in covering meteorology and weather theory. We will cover a topic that usually covers us, clouds. A cloud is simply a visible gathering of water molecules or ice crystals suspended in the air. A cloud with its base touching the surface is classified as fog. Normally, air must become completely saturated for clouds to form. This may result from a cooling temperature, an increasing dew point, or both. Typically, the cooling temperature is the culprit. This happens in one of three ways. Stagnant air overlying a cooling surface, air being pushed over a colder surface, or the most common cause of cloud formation, expansion cooling in upward moving air. The clouds are divided into families based on altitude. They are the high altitude clouds with the bases at an average height of roughly 35,000 feet dependent on latitude a minimum of 10,000 feet at the poles and a max of 60,000 feet at the equator. These clouds are preceded by the prefix zero and are made up almost entirely of ice. The mid-altitude clouds, preceded by the prefix alto, are composed primarily of water. The heights of the bases of these clouds range from 6,500 to 25,000 feet in the middle latitudes. The low-level clouds are almost always composed entirely of water, which at times may be supercooled. If they lie below the freezing level, they may contain snow or ice particles. These clouds' bases range from the surface to 6,500 feet at all latitudes. The high, middle, and low clouds are further divided into categories based on how they form. Cumulus clouds are the big, lumpy, billowy clouds we all drew as kids. The name means accumulation, or in other words, a big heap of clouds. They are a result of convective updrafts, and their presence is a great indicator of an unstable atmosphere. Stratus clouds are characterized by a uniform sheet-like appearance. The name means stratified or layered. These clouds are typically a result of a stable layer of air cooling to the dew point and are generally associated with a stable atmosphere. Beware, as highly convective clouds may be embedded in a layer of stratus clouds, posing a threat to IFR traffic. Nimbus clouds are clouds from which rain is falling, and fractus clouds are those broken into fragments. Following these rules, the high altitude family includes cirrus clouds, cirrocumulus clouds, and cirrostratus clouds, all of which, like me, are typically thin and white in appearance. The mid altitude category is made up of altocumulus clouds, which have a wave pattern to them, and altostratus clouds, forming a veil over the sky, typically allowing only a small amount of sunlight through and the altonimbus clouds, named such because they drop rain. Oftentimes, these clouds do not allow sunlight to penetrate. Altocumulus standing lenticular clouds are those almond-shaped clouds formed over mountaintops and hills by mountain waves. There is no indicator of just how turbulent they may be, and avoidance is recommended. The low-level family is made up of stratus clouds, often occurring as a single uniform featureless gray layer of cloud. Stratocumulus clouds, occurring in patches of white or grayish clouds, and nimbostratus clouds, which are just stratus clouds producing precipitation. Stratus fractus and cumulofractus often occur underneath altostratus or nimbostratus clouds and are associated with precipitation. A fourth family is made up of clouds with extensive vertical development. Oftentimes, the bases of these clouds are found in the low-level altitudes, with the tops extending into either the mid- or high-level altitudes. These clouds usually contain supercooled water at altitudes above the freezing level. Included are towering cumulus clouds and cumulonimbus clouds for those associated with the precipitation. An anvil may be formed as these clouds extend upward, bumping up against the stratosphere and expanding outwards. The anvil is often an indicator of terrible weather to come. Flight through, under, and adjacent to the anvil should be avoided. This concludes today's discussion of clouds. I hope that you've learned something from this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope that you might like it or subscribe to keep track of future videos. Make sure the bell to the right of the subscribe button is activated for notifications. If you know somebody else who may benefit from watching this video, I hope that you may share with them today. Feedback in the comments section is always greatly appreciated. Thanks again, and safe flying.